the Democratic National Convention is taking place this week. And um, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I do not intend on watching. I mean, I'll look for clips online to see if there's anything interesting, but I just don't have the mental bandwidth to withstand that much bullshit and platitudes and propaganda that we will inevitably see. I don't want to see people who I dislike say nice things about someone who is the Democratic Party nominee who I also don't like and how we're all coalescing around the party. And I don't want to hear from people who I do like say nice things and lie to themselves about how wonderful Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be. I just I can't take it. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to step back, not watch that. The Republican National Convention, however, I will be tuning in because that is a shit show that I am uh, definitely not going to miss. You know, it's like a train wreck. You don't want to look away from it. Uh, but, you know, this week we have the Democratic National Convention. And as you see here, we have John Kasich up on the screen because by the time you see this video, he may have already spoken at this convention because, yes, Democrats invited him to speak. An anti-abortion, union-busting Republican governor is speaking at the Democratic Party's convention. And as Dan America points out here, he's not the only Republican who will be speaking because other Republicans are also speaking. Now, I don't know who specifically the Democratic Party is trying to appeal to here in inviting Republicans because Republicans will be voting for Donald Trump. So who are you trying to to get votes from with this like it doesn't make sense to me doesn't make sense to me it seems like maybe like hillary in 2016 they assumed that the left is going to be there and i mean most of the left did fall in line to be fair to them back in 2016 but they're trying to get republican party votes peel that off from donald trump maybe that's gonna work but it didn't work in 2016 and i think that by doing things like this it just it turns off your own base who you need to be excited to vote for you. And there's not much enthusiasm for Joe Biden among younger voters, younger black voters. So it, it doesn't make sense to me that they do things like this. They're painfully out of touch, but that's why I'm not watching, right? But um, ahead of the uh, speech that he's gonna be giving, John Kasich took a shot at another fellow speaker, AOC. Now AOC, she was lucky enough to receive 60 seconds to speak. <laughs> the rest of the squad was a uh, sideline, but she's going to get 60 seconds. How merciful of the Democratic Party. They're so inclusive of other voices, you know, of left-wing voices within their quote-unquote Big Ten. Now, Andrew Yang didn't even get a speaking slot. He said, I was expecting to speak, if I'm being honest, and you'd think that he would be expected to speak because even if he didn't go very far in the Democratic Party primary, he still was incredibly popular and brought this issue of UBI to the forefront of everyone's mind. So you would expect them to try to embrace like newer voices. But no, they invite uh, Republicans like John Kasich, who's taking shots at uh, the left, who the Democratic Party should be embracing. Now, um, in an interview with BuzzFeed News, this is what John Kasich said specifically about AOC. I think both parties have to have new ideas, and I think this country is moderate, said Kasich, winding up to a gentle criticism of Ocasio-Cortez. People on the extreme, whether they're on the left or on the right, they get outsized publicity that tends to define their party. You know, I listen to people all the time make these statements, and because AOC gets outsized publicity doesn't mean she represents the Democratic Party. She's just a part, just some member of it, and it's on both sides, whether it's the Republicans or whether it's the Democrats. Yes, because we all know that someone like AOC is the equal and opposite extreme of someone like Marjorie Green. Marjorie Green wants uh, protesters extrajudicially murdered, anyone who she deems Antifa, whereas AOC wants healthcare. Same coin, just different sides. Equal and opposite extremes, according to John Kasich, a Republican. Now, he's wrong because AOC is actually the individual who is more moderate than him because he's out of step with what American voters want. Americans want Medicare for all. Americans want to legalize pot. Americans support unions. Americans want a Green New Deal. Americans want to increase the minimum wage. They are not against abortion, contrary to popular belief. So because AOC is supporting policies that most Americans want, she's not the radical. You are. You're the one who's radical. You're the one who's against the American people. Just because ideologically you may be in between where AOC is on the spectrum and the Republican Party, that doesn't necessarily mean that she's the radical because she's on the fringes of what's deemed respectable in D.C. No, look at her policies and check the public polls. See who Americans are with more, you or her. He probably doesn't realize that more Americans agree with her 
than him. And maybe that's why she's getting so much publicity because she's popular. Now, a reporter named Melissa Ryan actually tweeted out this quote from John Kasich and AOC saw that and responded saying, it's great that Kasich has woken up and realized the importance of supporting a Biden-Harris ticket. I hope he gets through to GOP voters. Yet also, something tells me a Republican who fights against women's rights doesn't get to say who is or isn't representative of the Democratic Party. We can build bridges and not lose sight of our values. It's important to remember that Kasich is an anti-choice extremist. He 100% will and has has signed away our reproductive rights the moment he has the opportunity to do so. He is not a friend to workers. So she's 100% correct here in calling him an extremist because he is the one who is the extremist in this context, right? If you are out of step with Americans and all of the things that you've done as a lawmaker has been against what the people want, then you are the radical because everyone disagrees with you and agrees with AOC. Again, we want Medicare for all, a Green New Deal, legal weed, $15 minimum wage, that's what we want. You don't support those things, so you're the radical here. Although I will say that AOC and I kind of diverge because she gives Joe Biden and Kamala Harris too much credit. Like, the only importance of them getting elected is that Trump will be gone. That's it, though. I mean, maybe they'll get in and handle COVID-19 like adults. I'm expecting them to, right? At least do a national mask mandate. But other than that, they're going to do fuck all for people. They're not going to give us Medicare for all. They're already backing down from a public option. Like, they're not important, right? They're just conveniently, currently, the one thing that stands between Donald Trump and another four years in the White House. So that's why they're important. But their importance stops there, right? After this election, once Trump is out, they're no longer important and you have to fight them like hell. Now, I expect the AOC to do that. I hope she will, right? But, you know, it just, it's really, it's frustrating because we're already kind of seeing what to expect, right? If Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are elected, I mean, they're inviting Republicans to the Democratic National Convention. So who do you think they're going to listen to more? People like AOC, who they gave 60 seconds to, or uh, John Kasich and the other Republicans who they're listening to, or their donors? I mean, so the entire situation is uh, very frustrating. Uh, the situation is grim. Uh, I hope that they can defeat Donald Trump. But if they uh, manage to get him out of power, it's not going to be PG Keen. And I think that a lot of liberals right now, even some lefties, are under this delusion that that will be the case. When, you know, if they are able to get in and stop COVID-19 from spreading, actually give people a little bit more support during this pandemic, that's great. But um, they're not going to address the underlying issues that led to the rise of Donald Trump in the first place. And that's why... We have to fight them. That's why we have to fight the Democratic Party, because they very clearly do not understand that because they don't want to, because they don't really disagree with Donald Trump that much. Why? Because they have the same donors. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say for now about the Democratic National Convention. It just looks like a uh, uninspiring snooze fest, and I'm not really particularly interested in hearing the same platitudes we've heard you know for the past four years over again nah not interested i'll pass america is at a crossroads sometimes elections represent a real choice a choice we make as individuals and as a nation about which path we want to take when we've come to challenging times america is at that crossroads today i'm proud of my republican heritage I'm sure there are Republicans and independents who couldn't imagine crossing over to support a Democrat. They fear Joe may turn sharp left and leave them behind. I don't believe that. No one pushes Joe around. Beta male.